Ladies and gents, this is the moment you've been waiting for. A podcast for podcasters. This is Creating the Greatest Show, and I'm your host, Casey Cheshire. Join me as we interview podcast hosts and investigate the ingredients of a successful interview podcast. We'll talk mistakes, earned skills, powerful questions, and more. This show is sponsored by Ringmaster, completely done for you, B2B podcast production. Let's do this. Let's launch this thing. My guest today is an entrepreneur, a founder, a marketer, a podcaster. And I'm actually interviewing him down under, chatting live from Australia. The amazing powers of Squadcast here can bring us together. Uh, his podcast, Predictable B2B Success, has over 360 episodes. So this is not his first rodeo talking about podcasting. Founder of Sproutworth, Bene Koshoi. Welcome to the show, sir. Casey, it's an honor to be on the show. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, man. This is cool. I'm excited. Let's talk about podcasting. You've done just a few episodes here. <laughs> what is your most important strategy for a great interview podcast? Uh, I'd say it's listening. Um, uh, listening to the people that you're talking to. It's probably something that people commonly take for, for granted, uh, but it's uh, I believe there's a, there's great value in actually being able to really listen to what's being said. What what does it mean to really listen to your guest? Um, uh, if if you're really wanting to do a deep dive into this, uh, I'm probably not the best person to uh, to get into deep listening. But there's um, a fellow Australian by the name of Oscar Trimboli uh, who has a podcast called Deep Listening, and it's definitely worth a listen. Um, so. Uh, um, uh, Oscar puts it this way. There's about uh, five levels of listening. Uh, there's listening to yourself. There's listening to what's uh, the content or what's being said, the context, what's being unsaid, and then, of course, uh, the meaning of what we're trying to convey to each other as well. That makes sense. That makes sense. Do you do any prep before a podcast? Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, I've, I've had the pleasure of having you on, on the yeah. podcast uh, and uh, uh, with, all, with all of the guests, I do insist on having a conversation, uh, be it a short one, uh, before we actually record. Uh, it uh, helps us not just to get to know each other a little bit, but explore and bounce around a few ideas, which, which is always a good thing. Uh, and of course, I, I get to hear a little bit about the passions of uh, the other individual as well. All right. Is there a most important part to your prep call? Um, I, I would say all of it uh, is, is important. Uh, there's no one piece that uh, really sets the agenda, so to speak. Um, uh, but in the conversation, uh, I, I'm trying to allow the other person to elaborate on what's on their heart, what's on their mind. Uh, and. Um, I'm happy to work off off that in, in, on the podcast, uh, which which we'll record at a later date. And there was a particular question you asked to get at that. Um, uh, I more often than not start uh, conversations with a question like, uh, "Is there a commonly held belief that your prospects or clients hold that you passionately disagree with?" Yeah, you know, the disagreement most, question, it's like, a, it's a, like, you know, on my marketing pod, I, I smash a myth. There's something about disagreement mm -hmm. that tends to get people fired up and you tend to get Correct. the passion or you get the anger or the mm -hmm. something, some, something other than apathy to the question. Absolutely. Uh, and that's uh, a part of, you know, the, the question process is to try and unpack some of that, uh, not just the logic, but the emotion as well. Right. I don't know if you ever had a podcast where your guest was just completely logical and nothing but logic. And then <laughs> it just feels, it can feel like it's flat, right? It can feel like it really is an interview, like it's tedious. Uh, it, it could. Um, having said that, I, I think there are some very, very intelligent people who know a lot uh, and can do a really deep dive into the technical details. Um, and uh, yet there are uh, stories 
which I'm sure some of your other guests have, have elaborated on, uh, that uh, reside within these individuals. But it just takes a little bit of uh, work to, to uh, help them unpack those. Uh, and that's really, again, where listening comes in. It's uh, kind of helping uh, pick up on specific details that can lead them down the path of being able to tell these stories, which unpack some of the emotion that all individuals do feel. Uh, regardless of how they may be wide. Yeah, the emotion, the stories, it really conveys something powerful. Have you ever, I mean, 360 episodes is a lot. Have you ever not published one? I have, yes. Um, uh, there are s some, and really it's been a, um, a couple of instances where uh, the guest has kind of used it as a platform to uh, conduct a sales speech, so to speak. And I, I just felt that there really wasn't any value in in, uh, w uh, in the episode that we recorded. Uh, simply, even though I was trying to steer them away from uh, that, um, there was just too much of a sales pitch in the in the recording, and hence chose not to uh, release those particular episodes. Did they come out too strong? Did they start talking about their company too soon? Like, like what in particular happened that just made it clear to you as more of a pitch? Uh, I would just, I just felt that um, in those instances, there was just too much about their company, their product, their service, uh, you know, how great they were, et cetera, <laughs> which kept, kept coming up uh, more often than not. So they were talking about their company, their product, the services, too much. Even themselves is weird, right? When they yep. start saying how great they are. Um, you know, I, I haven't had anyone get too, too salesy on me, but I'm always hesitant and I always try to warn people and preps because I don't want that to happen, right? Because if I feel like it might be mm -hmm. an ad, then it can be. Have you ever experienced the, you know, like you're talking to a technologist and their tool actually sounds great. You know, maybe they're the founder mm -hmm. of a, a tool and, and they made it and, and you want to ask about it, but you don't want the show to sound like it's you're just a stooge for that platform, right? <laughs> How do you balance yeah. that? Not wanting it to be an ad, but you're the one asking questions about it. Uh, um, I don't think there's any problems. Uh, at least this is my take on it. I don't believe there's any problems in uh, helping people discover uh, a particular product, uh, helping them understand the context uh, of the conversation and the product or the service might be an integral part of that. Uh, however, if it becomes all about the product, the features, the benefits, etc., uh, then you're uh, going down a rabbit hole that I'd rather not, personally speaking. Uh, but if yeah. you could make it applicable to the audience in terms of uh, this is a great product, these are the kind of problems that it solves and understand the use cases, the applications, etc., then it becomes more applicable and useful for uh, the audience, at least uh, with, with my podcast. I would think. Yeah. Okay. I could see that. I could see that working out well done right. And if you don't, and I can see that making it a little bit more challenging for you. Silly. Uh, just to give you an example, uh, um, I had what I would call something of a non-traditional uh, interview um, uh, a little while ago. The uh, person I was interviewing was the CEO of a reverse logistics company uh, where they took care of um, high-end equipment for uh, companies like Google and uh, Microsoft, etc. cetera. Um, uh, it, the service itself is, is pretty unique and there's a lot we could unpack with that. But uh, through the process of our uh, interview, um, he had a bunch of stories uh, about how he met uh, the needs of his clients, including Google, uh, it's it's a uh, it's become a nationwide service. Uh, but the stories of how he became nation uh, a nationwide service, how he was able to you know meet the deadlines uh, within two hours, even though he was interstate, right. etc., uh, really made for some interesting stories uh, and application. Uh, uh, not just uh, uh, you know the the idea of um, unpacking some of his ability to hustle. Mm -hmm. But uh, the actual outcomes and things were very applicable to uh, others uh, in, in, in the B2B tech space or, uh, yeah, uh, B2B tech space and bioscience space, certainly. What, 
what is like your worst nightmare about happening on your podcast? Like what is the worst thing you can imagine? Is there anything you are live in fear of happening on your show? <laughs> um, you know, just before uh, you hit record, uh, I was having mic troubles uh, over here. Uh, and, and that's probably the worst nightmare that technology uh, plays up. Um, I, you're using Squadcast, uh, but I did try uh, uh, an alternative uh, solution. We, I won't mention names. Are you throwing uh, names out? This I is a podcast try. podcast. And what, do you like, <laughs> what tools do you like? Um, I use Zoom, and I'll tell you why. Because I, I tried uh, this tool called Riverside. Riverside, yeah. Um, now... I, I, I recorded two episodes. They were fine. The third recording, I had this great conversation with the CEO of a company. And when I was listening to it, it was completely, completely mangled. <laughs> and <laughs> I, I quit Riverside and went back to Zoom. <laughs> uh, I just figured uh, my episodes with uh, Zoom didn't were trouble free, even though it's not the best quality. Uh, I might need to give Squadcast a, a try, but yeah, uh, I think yeah, no, you know, Riverside has had issues. One of the other things, too, I don't know if you've done this, but you can hide yourself in Squadcast, which is so important for me. Yep, you I did that? that? Yeah. Um, hiding yourself is so important uh, because <laughs> for some reason, just staring at yourself. I mean, there's a reason why every other app on the planet, you can hide yourself. You can't do that on Riverside, and it drives me absolutely bonkers. Um, and there are worse tools, uh, but I, yeah, I like Squadcast so far. It gets everything done and it's a good price, you know, somewhat easy to use. But what I do yeah. like is when we were troubleshooting that mic, I could see what mic was selected for you. And I could mm. even change it yeah. from my end, which is really neat. Like, I, oh, I, let me pull up that ATR and select it for you, you know, that kind of thing. Absolutely. Uh, I'll, I'll need to give it a try. Yeah, give it a try. Um, I had a chance to interview uh, some cool people from the team, um, Ariel and a few others uh, were, were pretty fun. So, yeah, we're, we're giving it a whirl and seeing what happens with it. So if that's the worst thing that could happen, what's the best? Like For you, what does the best interview look like? The best interview uh, would really be a guest who's willing to share off their experience, uh, their knowledge. Uh, and tell a, a few stories along the way. Uh, th and that usually makes for a good episode. Yeah. It, something about stories, personal stories, just really mm -hmm. get right to it. You know, it, it, and they're memorable and we remember them. It just, it sort of locks itself in there. Well, Certainly. this is all the things we've enjoyed about podcasting. What would you say your biggest challenge is with it right now? Uh, biggest challenges are really being able to uh, scale. Uh, I, I do, uh, this is kind of my uh, uh, thing as it were, the, uh, the podcasting side of things. I kind of do everything uh, for myself, um, being able to scale it out and uh, oh, wow. do more with so it. So you do all the, you've done all the editing for the 360? Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't do any serious editing. I do give it a light edit. Uh, but yeah, uh, Descript, yeah, Descript uh, is, is a, sure. a pretty neat tool that helps yep. with all that. So it um, uh, makes life uh, quite easy in that sense. So it sounds like you need to get yourself an agency, sir. Certainly. <laughs> um, uh, I'm, I'm thinking about that uh, because I am thinking about launching a new podcast uh, as well. Um, so Cool. Uh, but... How is this new one going to be different from your current one? What kind of changes do you think you're going to make? To it? Uh, so the uh, predictable B2B success podcast is very much focused around unpacking an aspect that lends to creating predictability in the B2B tech space. Now, it's pretty broad. We cover quite, quite a broad range of topics. Um, in the new one called uh, uh, In the Art of the Customer, uh, it will really focus on two things. One, how, do you, how does the uh, guest serve their clients? And then I try to capture their perspective of being a client of a particular product or service, and I unpack that. So it's very much um, uh, uh, trying to look at your your stories of success and journey through a particular product or service. Got it. Well, 
will it be the same type of mechanism? Like, will you repeat the same sort of logistical mechanisms or do you, does it have that sort of B2B use case for your company? Uh, absolutely. I mean, um, I would like to focus in on the B2B um, uh, space, uh, uh, put it the effect yeah. that way. Um, and the mechanisms, yes, will probably be quite similar. Uh, it's just that the content and the format will be uh, different. It kind of speaks to a, a different Got uh, it. interest level. Got it. Okay, cool, cool. Well, you know, one of the other questions I like to ask relating to that is, let's say we chat 50 episodes from now, you know, about a full year mm -hmm. later, if it's a weekly show, right? What do you hope to see your current show look like? I mean, does it change? Is it more predictable? Does that change? And then what do you hope to see from your new show 50 episodes from now? Um, 50 episodes from now with the predictable B2B success podcast, uh, certainly be um, able to gain more traction, yeah. um, uh, widen the audience, so to speak. Uh, but um, I, I think I, I would say with in in the customer, uh, the new new podcast that I'm thinking of doing, uh, it would certainly be uh, a similar audience, uh, but one that perhaps gives more of a uh, a taste to the audience of the kinds of stories that we uh, help unpack. Uh, so there's that. But uh, in in terms of the podcast itself, uh, I would certainly hope that uh, it's able to gain some traction, um, act as a bit of a, uh, a showcase, if you will, for some of the things that we do uh, uh, outside of the podcast. Do you do you ever think about sponsorships for your show? I have. Um, it's not something that I've uh, done a bit of a deep dive on. Uh, in, in that, I've I've always uh, enjoyed the process of podcasting as a means of getting to know other individuals um, and uh, you know, unpack their stories and, and the knowledge, so to speak. Um, I kind of treat it the way I would if I were to meet someone for the first time uh, at yeah. a, a mixer event or something of that nature. Um, in in such scenarios, we don't have ads pop in, you know, <laughs> saying, yeah. uh, uh, "Hey, you should check this out," etc. So, uh, if if that's the kind of feel that I'm going for, uh, it just never made sense to me to have ads be interjected halfway through a conversation. Um, that, that's my uh, perspective. Um, I, I know folks think a bit more from a commercial point of view and, and do that, but uh, I guess I just. I'm just trying to make this simple uh, and uh, easy for for myself and, and potential guests as well. So I haven't thought about sponsorships. Having said that, it's not something that uh, I wouldn't uh, perhaps look at down the track. Yeah. A friend of mine makes over a million dollars from his podcast, and a lot of it comes from sponsorships. It really got me thinking about it mm. because, you know, it – you and me, you and me, we do that that B two B podcasting thing. But there are there are other people who would like to be in front of the same audiences that that we're going after. So there is, there is some potential for that. It's definitely something I've been thinking a lot about. Certainly, uh, I, I think um, uh, uh, having listened to a few podcasts, uh, Andrew Ward on the Mixergy uh, podcast does it particularly well. He kind of weaves it through uh, almost. Kind of natural. Yes, he does take a break from the, from the topic that he's sure. discussing, but uh, does a better job of weaving it through uh, the overall podcast as opposed to having uh, you know uh, almost an interruption uh, into the uh, into the segments. So right, right. We and I think that's the thing, right? Thinking about your listeners and and not wanting them to experience anything that you wouldn't want to hear yourself. Yeah, which I guess cycles back around all the way to the beginning, which what we were talking about was listening and, and thinking about the quality and, and, and avoiding your guests from pitching and all that kind of thing. Absolutely. Uh, what would you say to a, 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 pot, a person, I was going to say a podcaster, a person who's mm -hmm. thought about podcasting for a long time, especially for their business in the B2B world, and they haven't done it yet? Um. You know, uh, I guess uh, a lot of people would be inclined to say, just do it. Uh, and and uh, my 
uh, uh, re reaction or response would be, um, do it for the right reasons. Uh, so you, you've got to understand yourself, your motivations for doing this, uh, and see if it's a good fit uh, for that particular uh, platform yeah. and, and format uh, before we actually, uh, you know, jump in, uh, jump head first into it uh, and then try and figure it out. That makes a lot of sense. A lot of sense. Powerful words. Absolutely. Where, where can people get in touch with you? Tell me more, you know, tell everyone more about your podcast, where people can find it, all that. Sure. Uh, so the predictable B2B success podcast, um, uh, you can find it on any, uh, podcast, uh, platform that you, that you prefer. Uh, um, you can, you can find it on, uh, or episodes on and show notes on my website, spreadwith.com, uh, or just drop me a note on LinkedIn if, uh, you prefer to use a, a social platform excellent and we will link to all these things fantastic thank you so much for coming on here ha chatting with me about listening about context prep calls swapping notes uh this has been fantastic no worries at all casey thank you thank you so much it's been an honor 100 percent. what time is it where you're at it is just gone 6 a.m oh my gosh it is six in the morning. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, you got up for me at, at five in the morning or earlier to be able to do this podcast. So I, I appreciate that, man. Uh, early, actually. <laughs> so your day just started. What, what's uh, what's Thursday look like so far? Uh, well, I'll, I'll probably need to get uh, rid, of, <laughs> rid of my <laughs> morning shadow. Um, uh, I just literally got out of bed, did a call prior to yours uh, and jumped on this. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's school holidays here in Australia, so I have the little one uh, running around. So uh, mind mind her for a little bit and try and get some work done as well. Love it. Love it, man. Thank you so much. And for those listening, thank you for listening. If you learned something, and I freaking know you did, then share this episode with one person, three people, 9,000 people. Uh, that's thought leadership. And once again, thank you, Vinoy. This has been fantastic. No worries, Casey. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Thank you all. This has been another crazy cool episode of Creating the Greatest Show. We will see you all next time. And next time doesn't have to be next week. Life's too short and we have way too much to talk about. Find show notes full of takeaways, lessons, and links at creatingthegreatestshow.com. For more information on launching your own podcast or working with us to produce your existing show, come on down to the big tent at ringmaster.com. Until then, friends, whatever you do, do it with all your might. Work at it, if necessary, early and late, in season and out of season, not leaving a stone unturned and never deferring for a single hour. That which can be done just as well now. P.T. Barnum.